Hey, Madison, look. It's the marshal. John was not only an honest and courageous marshal, he was a friend. He was a friend to every man and woman in Bitter Springs. Every one of us should make it our business to see that whoever shot him doesn't go unpunished. Gentlemen, I'm going to the governor. This time, I'm going to see that the territory of New Mexico offers a reward. One big enough to Mr. ensure... Mr. Crawford, there's no denying that you've been tying into these outlaws the best that you knew how. But offering rewards and lambasting him with your newspapers hasn't done much good. It's still just the same as it was the year that government finished its road. Uh, nobody can drive a wagon or a head of stock out of it without running up against gunplay. Uh, we're all worse off than before it was built, excepting maybe Madison Pike. Now look here, Lathe Dibble. Are you trying to accuse me of... No, I ain't even to accuse. But facts are facts. Anybody that wanted to get in or out of this valley has got to pay for the use of your toll road. They wouldn't if the government guarded its road as good as I guard mine. Why don't it do like me? Go to the expense of fetching in some high-grade lead slingers. There's no call to fetch in anybody. We have men right here in the valley that can draw just as fine a beat as any. And all they have to do is to get organized. That's just what I've contended all along. The only problem is to find the right man to organize and lead him. What about you, Leif? I'll recommend you to the governor. I'll tell him oh, that you... Oh, much obliged. I wouldn't want a jinx like that hanging over my head. Four dead marshals in one year? Killed most as fast as you could recommend them? No. I can't see any sense in a man signing his own death warrant in advance. Now, that isn't from the lack of courage, men. I don't know how you feel, but I'm through paying $3 a head for the right to drive my beef to market. And as soon as they're fat and ready, I'm taking them out over that government road, or die while trying it. Come on, son. Son, I thought I told you to stay at home with your mother. We got a man's job here to do. Gosh, Dad, I'm not a kid anymore. I can punch cattle as good as any of the men. You told me yourself, a man ought to learn to be a man before he votes. All right, son. You're going to have to have a man's experience sooner or later. Now, we're going to try to make stage them flat before we make camp. Come on. Get along, Longhorn. Come on. You! You! <laughs> Now, men, I figure to get moving before sunup tomorrow morning. And we're all going to have to take turns of standing guard. So you can't figure on getting much sleep. But we... Take cover, men, and blast them. Get out, son. I've done a lot of living, but your life is all ahead of you. Quick, we gotta get him inside. Bleeding off for bad. Where'd he get hit? What happened? We ain't sure. Everything turned out slick until we found out he was missing. Yeah, we went back to look for him and found him all shot up. He hasn't come to more than once or twice. Looks like he's going to check out. We were afraid to take him to a dock. Come on, buck up. Snap out of it. Open your eyes. Look at me. Do you hear me? You know who I am? 
Get him into that chair quick. I gotta get his signature. What on? Then get him to sign over the toll road before he passes out. Then I'll get the road deeded to somebody else I can trust. Maybe you, Bruce, but first of all, we gotta get his signature. Did you hear what I said? You've gotta write your name. There. Right there. Come on. The name all right, Madison? Folks used to call him Mad for short. I guess because he was so sort of wild and hair him, scare him. It just goes to show, Red. Nobody thought he'd get any place. And yet this here paper says he was the owner of a 30-mile toll road. Maybe toll road worth he much want. Well, that all depends on where it is and where it goes to, Little Beaver. Bitter Springs. How did the paper from there get way out here? Well, the wagon peddler I bought these shoes from used it for wrapping paper. It's a funny way to find out a relative is dead. Oh, he wasn't much of a relative. Some sort of a fourth cousin on my mother's side. Say, Red, what do you know about Bitter Springs? Well, it used to be pretty good cattle country. Maybe still is. Let's see if this paper carries a livestock report. Well, listen to this. To whom it may concern... Whereas the late Madison Pike died intestate without known heirs, it is hereby announced that all properties and holdings of said deceased shall be disposed of by court order August 2nd, 1894. Right there in small print. You might need a magnifying glass to find it, but there it is. Well, all right, but what on earth does it mean? It means that when you bought a $3 pair of shoes, maybe you got a toll road thrown in. Oh, shucks. Now listen, Duchess. A fourth cousin might be claim enough to Madison Pike's property. That is, unless they find a closer up heir. Did he have any brothers or sisters? His parents dead? Anybody else? Well, none that I know of. Then you're as good as in. Come on, pack your curling iron. Now listen, Red, wait a minute. Wait nothing. There's no time to lose if you want to get there by August the 2nd. Well, but aren't you going with me? Well, I have to help Hank and the boys get the last of that cattle shipment off. Then I'll trail along. Might not be a bad idea to send the editor of that paper a telegram. Have somebody on the lookout for you when you get there. As far as known, she is nearest of kin to said party. She is leaving by stage of this date to lay claim as heir to properties of the deceased. Anything you can do for her will be appreciated by the undersigned, Red Rider. Well, there you are. Looks like your paper's whiter red than you thought. Who is this here Red Rider? You know as much about him as I do. Now, a lot of people are just set on making pests for themselves. Well, I guess this means a slop bucket for that nice private sale you rigged up, huh? Did you notice, Mr. Crawford, this fellow says he'd appreciate anything you can do for his aunt? Yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. Here, let me look at that telegram again. She is leaving by stage of this date. Man. Uh, Black Butte Springs, ma'am. This is where we get a change of horses. Well, how far is it to Bitter Springs? Uh, around about 10 miles. You better get back in the coach, ma'am. We're running a little late. We've got to make up time. Howdy, mister. How far is it to Bitter Springs? Well, by the road, it's 10 miles. But if you light out for that ridge and follow it south, we'll cut it down to about seven. There's a plain horse trail all the way in. Much obliged.
Look, little beaver. It's a runaway. Something's happened to the driver. Pike ain't got no air no more, if that's what you mean. I left the coach going full speed down Snake Canyon Road. <laughs> she didn't have a chance. Better report the accident right away. But watch what you say. Why, it's simple enough. My brake gives way on the steepest part of the grade, and what was dead man's curve right ahead? Wasn't no sense of me going over with the stage, was it? So I left... You'll do, all right. We just printed a notice setting the sale for tomorrow. I'll go over and post it in front of the marshal's office. Look, Red. There's the fellow that was driving. What kind of a stage driver do you call yourself? It was my aunt you nearly got killed. I didn't get nobody near killed. What do you expect me to do when my brake is away? I didn't find anything wrong with the brake when I tried using it. We'll settle this argument right quick. You picked yourself bad medicine, stranger. I'm like somebody catching heat thinking. Maybe Red. Oh, Red will take good care of himself. Hand me down the rest of that stuff. Obliged, little beaver. But you didn't have to do that. If that's the way he wants to play, let him go ahead. Here's a gun for you. But when you go for it, go for it fast. Because when you do, I'll draw.
Now, now, gentlemen, there's been enough of this. You just treated Bitter Springs to the most amazing spectacle in its history. Luke Case has rated the toughest man in a rough and tumble in the whole territory of New Mexico. I'm agreed. He's tough, all right. Nobody tough like Red. Red? Well, you must be Red Ryder. Well, my name is Crawford. I'm the man you telegraphed to. Howdy. Well, this is the Duchess. Oh, yes. You're Red's aunt. He's an awful lot of trouble at times. Well, I'm glad you got here. I was afraid you wouldn't make it in time. Let's go over to my office. We go to Red? Why, sure. Now, this is little Beaver, my sidekick. He's as much attached to me as my shadow. A lot more useful. And I have to be frank to admit, these outlaws and cutthroats still continue to hold the upper hand. We need men like you, Ryder, but it wouldn't be fair to you and your aunt to keep you here by painting the picture any more encouraging than it is. I'm afraid all we can offer you is trouble. Understand, I'm not trying to advise you, ma'am, but uh, I think the best thing you could do is to sell the toll road. Of course, it wouldn't bring much. Well, who would she sell it to? Oh, I couldn't say offhand, but uh, I think we might be able to find a buyer. Well, much obliged, Mr. Crawford. But the Duchess holds that anything that's good enough to buy is good enough to keep. Besides, if Madison Pike was able to make out, we ought to be able to likewise. Oh, yes, I was just coming to that. You see, in order to keep his road free from bandits, Pike had to employ an armed guard. He uh, hand-picked him himself in Santa Fe. I see no reason why they wouldn't be as willing to work for you as for him. Of course, it would cut into your profits. Now, how much? Mm, considerably, I'm afraid. Those men are gambling with their lives, and that's high stakes. They stood Pike around $1,500 a month. Why, that's ridiculous. Certainly, but what can we do about it? Well, that's pretty hard to say, but I aim to find out. Come on, Duchess. Let's look up the marshal. Oh. Right over this way, boys. Come on, Duchess. Come on, Duchess. Crawford, come and have a look at the kind of law the marshal is fetching in. Here, leave them women's unmentionable to law. And us worrying our heads off about nothing. That's about the tamest looking lot of deputies I've ever seen. Appearances are sometimes deceiving, but I don't think they could be quite as deceiving as that. Anyway, we'll soon find out. Is that beef you took off Dibble about ready to drive? Yeah, I got about 30 head ready. The brand's changed so slick, even I can't tell the difference. They're corralled outside of town. Well, come on. The old lady's about to get her first customer. I think maybe I'd like that bottom one best. That's a pretty big gun, Sonny. If you made a hit, there wouldn't be much gray squirrel left. It's not gray squirrels I'm hunting for, Mr. Crawford. Maybe you'd let me examine it closer. Cute little fixings, ain't they? Uh, you never said nothing about fetching along the cat. But on account of she just had a family, I figured the little woman would get lonesome, so I brought her along. <laughs> well, ma'am, it looks like you're about ready to start doing business. Well, I suppose so. Uh, that is, I... Sure. Uh, any time now. Now, these are the men I told you I sent for. They get restless when there's any loafing. That makes it fine for you. Bruce Jackson here has a small bunch of cattle. He's anxious to get through to Santa Fe. How many head, Mr. Jackson? Oh, around maybe 30. If you think it's safe, I'd like to take them over the toll road. Well, the way the Duchess aims to do business is to get everything through or pay for what's harmed. When will you be ready? I'll have my stairs at the toll road gate by 10 o'clock in the morning. Far enough. I can manage now until Ryder and his men get here. Sure. I'll help Luke get his surprise party ready. We'll meet you at Owl Creek. <laughs> Careful, little beaver. You know you can't afford to go to sleep on the job. We get out of bed before sun get out. We get out of town so nobody see. What for, Red? Well, I figured it wouldn't hurt anything to do a little scouting in advance. It could be that... Somebody appears to be in quite a hurry. 
might not harm anything to see where he's going and why. Been waiting long? No, I've just got here. Where's the marshal? I expected he'd come along. Well, he figured that he wouldn't be needed. He said that outlaws wouldn't worry about 30 head, so he just turned over and went back to sleep. <laughs> but you ain't got everything to worry about. Not as long as I'm in charge. <laughs> Luke. All right, fellas. Get out of sight and keep hid. Separate enough to cover both sides of the road. I'll start off by taking care of Ryder, then the rest of you open up. Well, we found out what we wanted to know. What do we do now? Get him, Scout? No, there's too many for that. Let's backtrack. I thought you said you were staying in town, Ryder. Well, I decided that little Beaver and I needed to ride to work up an appetite for breakfast. And as a result, we most ran slap dab into a nest of outlaws. Outlaws? Where, Red? Five, maybe six mile ahead. What do we do now? Turn back to town? No, sir. I guaranteed to get your beef to Santa Fe uninjured. Yeah, but you said there are outlaws ahead. This time it's going to be different, Mr. Jackson. If those rustlers were waiting for you to come along, they're going to be disappointed. Bad. All right, men. We're going to drive the cattle across country to the government road. And you, little beaver, ride back to town and tell the Duchess everything's all right. You betcha. I just found old Longhorn and more of our cattle. And the rustlers that stole them. Now, don't worry, Mother. I'll be all right. But, Sonny... up there. Hank, you and Mr. Jackson take cover and draw their fire. The rest of you boys go after the cows. I'll circle around them and try to get behind. Jack! 
shooting. Don't. That's the death range you're shooting at. What did you do that for? What are you doing? Oh, darn. Hey, mother, they're still after me. You leave him alone. You killed his father, isn't that enough? What do you want? What's he done? No great damage, I suspect. But that doesn't excuse anybody for being too reckless with a gun. He might oh. have... What's the matter, son? Were you hit? Touch some water in a rag. You're pretty young to start out being a cattle rustler. They were our cattle. They were stolen from us. You thought you were one of the rustlers. We were only riding guard while the owner drove them to market. That's the way it is with cows, son. They all look pretty much alike. Oh, is he hurt bad? Pretty painful, I suspect. Nothing dangerous. It looks like it missed the bone. I'll see that the doctor gives a proper care when I take him in. Well, then you're going to arrest him? That's my sworn duty, ma'am. I'm sorry, but it's a good thing you couldn't shoot any straighter, son. Because if you'd hit anybody, you sure would be in a fix. Look. That must be the new marshal now, fetching in the murder. What? It's Sonny Dibble. He ain't no outlaw. There's a lot of growed up outlaws in New Mexico. Couldn't you pick on one your size? What is it, Duchess? Stone dead. Shot through the heart. Must have happened right after the shooting began. Well, anyway... No, no, I didn't. I didn't mean to. Honest, I didn't, mister. I didn't aim at anybody. I just wanted to scare him, that's all. That won't make him free. Can't you understand? Wherever he goes, he'll be hunted. It'll be kill or get killed. He'll have to keep on killing until the he... The world's a big spread, ma'am. There are better places to live than here, and far enough away so that no law in New Mexico will follow him. The only chance the boy will get is what we give him. Everybody here now? The 
and I'll go and see this new marshal. Now the boys outside and ready to cover when things begin to pop. You might as well take it away, Mr. Ryder. I can't eat anything. Oh, of course you can, Sonny. A man can't keep his chin up on an empty stomach. Besides, the Duchess fixed it up special. You the new marshal? What can I do for you? Three or four weeks ago, I had a horse stolen. Just now, I came to town and found him tied to a hitching post. You can see him through that window. The sorrel with the white forelegs. Get your hands up. A little higher. What do you want? Sonny Dibble. Where's the key to his cell? Right there on the desk. Before you start shooting, make sure your draw is fast and your aim is straight. Because I'll shoot back and keep shooting as long as I'm able. I arrested Sonny Dibble because it was my duty. And now it's my duty to see that he gets a fair trial. He'll be given every chance to clear himself according to the evidence. Maybe the cattle were stolen from his father like he claims. That's hard to say. They were so scattered we haven't had a chance to round them up yet. But my men are out looking now. And there may be new evidence when we examine the brands. Anyhow, I'm not turning over any prisoner until the law says so. What's the argument, Marshal? There isn't any. We're all agreed. Come on. You and your boys better start riding, or you won't get home in time for your evening chores. Now, maybe a couple of you boys will be good enough to help this man on his horse. Here, riders too smart to let change brands fool them. I'd hate to be holding the bag if any of them lost cows ever. Anybody get hurt, Red? No, not that I heard of. Where are the cows I sent you for? I don't know. We didn't go far enough to look. We met Sonny Devil's mother headed this way. She said a bunch of hotheads left ahead of her. They were bent on trouble. Well, if you're talking about a planned jailbreak, it didn't amount to nothing. Where's Little Beaver? Why, I guess we coming so fast he couldn't keep up. He'd be along quickly. Yeah, but you ought to wait in for him. Little Beaver! Little Beaver! can't keep on like this. 72 hours in the saddle without sleep. Well, there's no time for sleep. We've got to find that Running kid. Running around in circles like this is not going to find little beaver. None of us boys can think straight. We're too dog tired. We've just got to have sleep. Well, maybe you're right. Round up the boys and fetch them in.
I was scared you got lost too, Red. Did you find anything? No, not a sign. Look, Red. Looks too well fed to be lost all the time he was gone. Somebody's been feeding him oats regular. Likely is not. Well, what is it, Red? Appears to be some kind of message. Must be from Little Beaver. You can tell the newspaper we don't care about any thousand dollars. The only way to get the engine boy back is turn Sonny Dibble loose. Warns us to hurry. Well, what are you going to do, Red? See Mr. Crawford and have him print my answer in his paper. Hello, Mr. Crawford. Hello, Ryder. Any trace of the boy? Yeah. Go ahead, read it. on Little Beaver's horse. They used his horse for a messenger. His horse? When did it get back? Just a couple of minutes ago. The only way I know to answer the demands in that note is through your newspaper. I want you to print a prominent, so they'll be sure to see it. All right, what do you want to say? Something to bring them more out into the open. Maybe I ought to try writing it myself. Now use that pencil and paper. Sure. Go right ahead. Yeah, I think that's fine. All we can do now is wait and see what happens. Anyway, I'll keep you posted. How soon will the marshal be back? Most any moment now. Won't you sit down? I'd have come in sooner, except for my pride. I wanted to tell you about this here little beaver. Yes, what do you know about him? Not much, except the boys and me passed an Indian kid answering his description. It was just after he left town, the day you and me had the argument. Yes, I was thinking you couldn't very well have missed him. What do you know about this? I don't know anything about it. How would I be sure I got Little Beaver back if I did turn Sonny Dibble loose? I said I didn't know anything about it. But it looks as if some of the other boys hit on a better idea than mine. Maybe you know how we could get in touch with those that do. Maybe I could. All right, go ahead. Here it is, just like gas. Plain enough for anybody to follow. Yeah, that's all right. I'll go right over and put it to work. Well, isn't that rushing things a little too fast? Might it make somebody suspicious? That's why I am rushing it. Ryder might get ideas if we give him time to think. I can handle everything now. You go back and tell the boys they can expect company. Jake, wake up. Listen to what I'm trying to say. Oh, I heard what you said. You said... Ryder, the fellow was just in my office. He claims he knows where Little Beaver's being held. Where is that man? And what's his name? Oh, I had to promise to keep that a secret before he'd open up. Says he's one of the gang. But he's willing to pull a double cross for the reward I offered. So I took a chance and advanced him $100 on this map. This cross marks the location of a deserted mine. He says a boy's tied up inside it. Usually, there's only one guard, sometimes not any. Is there any such mine? Yeah, I've been there myself. This is an old cow trail. Turns off about a quarter of a mile north of town. 
leads to Dry Creek Canyon. You turn up the canyon to here. All right, boys. It looks like we're doing some more riding. Come on, Jake. All right, you're asking too much. I'm half dead now. What are you kicking about? So am I. And so maybe is little Beaver. Well, he wouldn't be if he wasn't some mule stubborn. All you've got to do is to turn devil loose. Listen, man, Jake doesn't know what he's talking about. When a fellow gets to be marshal, he's got a sworn duty. Well, you didn't say anything about sworn duty when you sent for us. And you didn't say you was bringing us here for this bullet dodging job. Now, you fellas can do what you want to. But as soon as I catch up with my sleep, I'm going to hightail it out of here. He's yellow, Red. That's what's the matter with him. Why, you yellow-bellied cross between a lizard and a horned toad? If you so much as set foot out of that door, I'll... Well, I have lizards better off than the dead mule. Open that door, Duchess. Now, if any of you other fellas feel the way he does about it, then get out and stay out. What are you going to do now, Red? I know it's asking a lot, but this thing leaves me a trifle short-handed. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to ride out to this old mine with me, Mr. Crawford? Why, I wouldn't mind. I was only thinking that I might run into something unexpected. In that case, it would be a good thing to have somebody who could ride for help. All right, I'll be glad to go with you. Well, you'd better take along a gun. Well, I never had to carry one. I'll get one in my office. No, don't bother. Here. Take this one. All right. I'm ready to leave when you are. We ought to be getting pretty close, hadn't we? We turn off just ahead. Well, maybe you better ride out in front and watch the trail. I can scarcely keep my eyes open. Just him and Crawford. Crawford? He didn't say nothing about coming. He must have thought up a new wrinkle. Maybe so. We better get these lights out. <laughs> I don't hear anybody. I don't see any horses around. I'm going inside and see what I can find. You can stay out here if you want. If you can take a chance, so can I. I don't like the sound of this. I don't hear anything. That's just the trouble. It's too quiet. Could be we're running into a trap. That's possible. But shooting us wouldn't do any good. Well, just the same, I'm not in favor of running into anything blind. We hadn't better go much farther. All right, Ryder's dead. I did the job for you. That's just to make sure. Light the lamp so I can see where you are. What about the car folk deputies? They got fed up and pulled out. The only one we have to get rid of is the old woman. Well, what about the engine kid? What are we going to do with him? There's only one thing to do. Finish him off. Come on, Luke. Now, wait a minute. I didn't mind taking care of the old car folk, but when it comes to her... What's the matter? You getting soft? Reload. 
Then rush him. when you didn't turn your writing tablet over fast enough. That told me where the note came from. But I needed proof, so I had my men walk out of me. That gave me the excuse to fetch you along. And then when you set out to murder me, I had all the evidence I needed. suspected that a private owned road could make so much trouble for folks. But since it does, I think it's high time I got it off my hands and gave it to the people who need to use it. And so I got this here deed drawn up with enough whereases and aforesaids to make it legal. And since Red is giving up his marshal's job, I'm handing it over to you for safekeeping. Much obliged, ma'am. But we're sure gonna miss your nephew. He was the only honest to goodness marshal we ever had. Put up, Smink, at Millbeck's on stage. Stay when we get horses ready. Wake up, Red! Huh? Time for the ride again. Get up! Come on, wake up. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Ryder, for all you've done. Except for you, I'd probably be, well, anyway, much obliged. Speaking man to man, Sonny, much obliged to you. Much obliged. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. 